Hey everyone, and welcome back to Metroid Zero Mission 100%. Well, let's traverse through ZBs. Let's uh, search for Mother Brain. Let's destroy it and, uh, well, let's go back to our ship to eat some cookies, right? Everyone loves cookies. I hope, right? Right? Well, I'm not quite sure about that, but uh, what I really know that uh, everyone loves bombs. What? I get only one? I want more! But yeah, this is our, our next upgrade, Bomb. So basically, while we are in our Morph Ball form, we can now set bombs. So we can set infinite bombs. It's not that we only have one. <laughs> no, no, no. So basically now, we can, uh, yeah, break different blocks, especially these ones, which have dots in them. And yeah, that way we can proceed uh, through many new different areas. And bombs can also be used to uh, dispose of enemies. So there's uh, one particular trick that the game is not telling you here that you can use with your bombs. This is uh, called bomb jumping, which acts kind of like a sequence break technique as well. So basically you place many bombs on top of each other and then you bounce off them and then you can just jump that way well, to infinite heights, basically, just infinitely. So yeah, bomb jumping is uh, really, really useful if you want to complete this game very fast. So, and yeah, here in this room we had to destroy these bugs because with this bomb upgrade you can also destroy these bugs. So yeah, we have uh, now a different way to uh, deal with these little critters. Yeah, this game, it was released at the time when the Alien movie was released, so it draws many similarities to the movie. It was actually inspired by Alien movie, so uh, yeah, we also have a strong female lead here. This is also a science fiction story, and uh, the main villain of the entire franchise... Well, in this game, the main villain is Mother Brain, but uh, the villain of the entire Metroid franchise actually resembles a giant xenomorph, so <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, here you saw the bomb jumping in action. So it's all about the timing here, because it's really hard to know when to place these bombs. But uh, the general idea is that, uh, that the rhythm goes like boom, 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 boom. It's uh, hard to explain by voice, uh, but, uh, well, if you saw it here, then, uh, yeah, you kind of can understand how it works. And also, one of the other features that the game is not telling you is um, wall jumping, which you saw there at the top that I executed. Basically, you must hug a wall, and then when you jump against that wall, you press the opposite direction, and also press jump button at the same time, and then you can jump off that wall. So, yeah, this is also one of the sequence breaking techniques, which is hidden uh, and the game is not telling you about it. So, generally speaking, the controls of this game are really, really tight, I really like them, but uh, it's really hard to get used to, especially if you are new to the Metroid franchise, because, you know, I was scaling from Castlevania games and transitioning from Castlevania games to Metroid, was quite hard for me, basically my very first playthrough, yeah, it was all about the mechanics, basically. I was learning them, I tried to perfect them, because, you see, Samus, well, she's not walking <laughs> slowly, she is constantly running, and the, the jumps, her jumps, are also really, really fast, so, uh, yeah, it's pretty hard to get used to some of these mechanics. And for example, you know, to use your Morph Ball, you have to tap down twice, because when you tap down the first time around, then you are crouching, so uh, it was really hard to get used to crouching in this game as well. And also, you know, that you can aim diagonally in this game, yeah, this is also <laughs> the technique which was hard to get used to as well in this game. But you know, after a while, when you play this game, then you kind of get a hang of it, get a gist of it, and um, then the gameplay feels really, really uh, fluid and smooth. So yeah, now we have to go to Norfair, which is our next location. Now currently we are in our kind of hub world, Brinstar, which kind of leads to all other places. So in the map screen you can uh, 
could scroll through different locations and view the map of them that way. So uh, yeah, it's uh, pretty handy. And uh, speaking about the timer, which we have on our map screen, um, it's not too useful in casual playthroughs, but uh, if you care about the time, or if you are speedrunning this game, uh, then this timer becomes really, really essential, especially if you care about uh, different endings in this game, because there are eight different endings that you can get, and one of the requirements to get uh, some of these endings is actually your in-game time. So, uh, yeah. Time is uh, pretty important in this game, so... Yeah, some of the blocks, as you can see, they reappear after a while. So, yeah, for example, this one that I broke just now, yeah, you see, he reappeared. So, yeah, sometimes blocks, well, they trick you, <laughs> really. So, watch out for uh, that, really. And speaking about energy tanks, well, you see, in this game, we start off with uh, 99 points of uh, energy, but each subsequent energy tank that we pick up gives uh, ourselves 100 points more of energy. So you see these, uh, well, that pink dot at the top left corner there? That pink dot uh, means our energy, our uh, energy tank. And uh, you don't have to kind of use them like in Mega Man games, they don't act like sub-tanks. They are just added to your health total, so to speak, so yeah, you don't have to worry about uh, these kind of things, so... Yeah, you see right now I'm exploring uh, Brinstar, this first uh, location here, because we now have a very, very uh, useful upgrade, yeah, bomb, so we can uh, gain access to different secrets, and uh, yeah, in general, we can uh, explore more things here, more stuff, so... And here's a pretty um, wacky and fun area with these tunnels, where there are these uh, spiky turtles inside. You know, uh, I have no idea if turtle soup is really a thing. Is it a thing? Because um, if I could, I would make turtle soup out of these spiky turtles, only without uh, spikes in them, you know, I would remove the spikes, because, uh, oh my god. I was the dentist many times in my life, and um, I don't want to do that again. I don't want to experience the terror and the horror again, please. <laughs> Everything but dentist. So... But I don't know, you know, if you're speaking about turtle soup, uh, if it is really a thing that I'm actually amazed uh, how people are eating uh, this soup, because uh, to me, turtles, they are kind of like, well, pets, basically. So basically you're eating pets. That's, um... Yeah, that's uh, pretty horrifying, you know. But yeah, speaking about alien, when I said that uh, uh, that uh, Metroid franchise was inspired by Alien movie, well, you kind of see that uh, this game it resembles the same feeling of dread, a bit of a feeling of horror, and also a feeling of isolation. Because, uh, well, we are all alone here on this planet. You never know what's around the corner, so you have to watch out, you know, and uh, also, yeah, the atmosphere kind of resembles Alien a bit. Not right now, not too much right now, but uh, especially in the uh, later parts um, of the game, you will uh, just uh, see uh, what I mean. So, and uh, these, uh, well, tubes, we passed one red tube right now. They, for whatever reason, remind me of Mario. I don't know. Whenever I see them, they just, uh, yeah, remind me of Mario games. I don't know why. Maybe that's just me, but, uh, yeah. They're just Mario ripoff. Really. <laughs> and uh, when Samus curls into her Morbal form, whenever I see Morbal, I can't stop but think of Google Chrome. Just this picture of Google Chrome icon is engraved into my mind. I don't know why, just that, you know, Morph Ball? <laughs> it looks like Google Chrome icon, just look at it. Okay, now you can't see it clearly, but uh, yeah, you see? 
Google Chrome icon. So, <laughs> also in this game we have lava. You see here to the right. Um, it deals damage to you, obviously, for now. But later on we'll acquire one uh, upgrade suit upgrade. Um, where uh, lava won't be a problem for us. But the thing is about lava that you have to remember that there are two types of lava in this game. So in this Brinstar location, we have a kind of like orange lava, just basic lava, right? It just deals damage to you when you step into it. But uh, in the next location where we we'll go to Norfair, there will be... Okay, the same lava, but there will be um, other lava as well, which is kind of more reddish color. And it's more bubbly, kind of. So, yeah, there are two types of lava. You have to remember that for later, because later on when you will uh, receive that upgrade, which uh, prevents you uh, from being damaged by lava, it only prevents you from uh, being damaged from the orange lava, which we have here in Princeton. So not preventing you from being damaged by that bubbly lava so also here uh, you saw there was a one unique block which had this little yellow uh, arrow in it uh, for now we can't break it we need also some other upgrade uh, well to go through uh, that place so what's with these bugs in this game Jesus Christ they are all over the place bugs just love Samus really <laughs> for no reason so yeah right now I'm going uh, slowly to Norfair but before heading there I want to check out this uh, place uh, which is uh, right below me here by the way one thing uh, that I forgot to mention about the map you see on the map there are these dots and there are these circles there so circles you may wonder what do they mean circle on the map means that in that particular room there is an item and uh, a dot means that you already picked the item in that room well I hope that makes sense so yeah I really like that you know this game kind of keeps track of items because um, items are all over the place in this game you know and it's really hard to remember where they are because, uh, well, you see, there are secrets just all over this game, so there are a lot of them. So, for example, in this case here, I wanted to grab that um, um, missile upgrade, right? Missile tank. But, uh, yeah, you see these uh, floating turtles were not letting me to grab it, so I just uh, skipped this missile tank for now. But the thing is, you see... The place is already marked on my map, and there is this circle on the map, so I already know that, uh, well, there was an item there, which I kind of skipped, right? But, uh, for example, later, when I'll come back, I'll just know that, uh, you know, there is an item there. So, yeah, it's a really handy feature, because in Castlevania games, for example, you don't have this uh, feature, so... So, um, yeah. So, uh, now you obviously know where the term Metroidvania comes from. Well, because the uh, Metroid games and Castlevania games, they feature a lot of uh, different uh, design similarities. So, yeah, but uh, Metroid in general, um, secret-wise, is more interesting to me because, yeah, secrets are just all over the place. On your first playthrough, to find these secrets, you'll be just uh, using your bomb, upgrade a lot in each and every room just to, well, fulfill your need for secrets, you know. I don't know. I don't know about you, but I always liked to uh, explore in video games and the uh, Metroid games especially are just golden in this regard. Yeah, remember this energy tank? Well, now, via clever sequence breaking by using our bomb jump, yeah, we can finally reach it. So, normally you have to kind of get it later, that energy tank, but uh, yeah. If you know how to use a uh, bomb jump, then uh, you can uh, get it uh, much more faster. 
Yeah, speaking about bomb jump, uh, you can uh, also jump not only just upwards, but also upwards and diagonally. But it's uh, pretty hard to do. Because, uh, yeah, when you use a bomb jump, you have to press um, upwards and to the left at the same time, or upwards and to the right at the same time. And then place one more bomb, and then press to the opposite direction of which you pressed to jump from that bomb uh, to the direction where you need. <laughs> okay, it's kind of hard to explain, but uh, well, you'll see how it works a bit later. So, okay, here. Well, for now, here, there's nothing we can do, but there are some unique blocks here, as you can see. Yeah, these blocks also need uh, one other unique upgrade, which we still don't have, so... So yeah, here I just wanted to, uh, well, look for uh, some secrets there, because there is a passage upwards here, but um, yeah, for now, I guess we just um, can't go there, so... But um, yeah, guys, uh, hopefully you enjoyed this uh, episode of uh, Metroid Zero Mission, so in the next part, we'll be heading uh, into our uh, next location, Warfare, and in the next part, uh, yeah, I think it's finally the time to deal with our giant worm, so, uh, yeah. See you all next time. Cheers!